Okay, so this is a tutorial just to show you how to do the basic um, clamp to the bike. So I'm using Pro Desktop uh, version 8 and to do that the first thing we need to do is go to file, click onto new drawing, so it'll be new design. When this screen appears you can turn off the palette, you won't need the palette and then you can maximize that work area. Okay, so first thing we needed to do was to perhaps have a look at some uh, attachments that's actually out on the market at the moment. Now the basic one uh, that we've got, if we just scroll along, is this type that seems to just hook over the bar of the bike and it's just bolted together. So that's the first one that we're going to have a look at quickly doing. Pretty straightforward and it's quite easy to do. Um, we're going to assume uh, that the top tube, which is this part of the bike here, is going to have a diameter of 40 millimeters as an external diameter and if we're designing for the handlebars where it's got the handlebar grip and the head tube etc that that is going to have a diameter of 20 millimeters and it's just something that I found from doing a bit of research and obviously measuring an actual bike to get those measurements there are other attachments we can look at so uh, if we zoom over here you can see this one's got a hinge that folds over um, slightly a bit more advanced, so we'll have a go at doing that one um, shortly as well. And it's just got two Allen key grub screws in, and they just attach onto the bike quite straightforward from there. So it's a simple clip, as you can see here. And then on this part, um, you can see where we've got this rubber sort of insole that, that stops it damaging the bike but also helps it grip. Um, so we need to think about fitting those together and these are quite easy to replicate um, you can see the one ring on the left over on this side um, sorry on the right where you've got no rubber inserts at all and how that will fit very straightforward very simple to do there are other attachments as well uh, for example the p-clips and uh, these are quite cheap they work in exactly the same way they sort of hook around the bike frame and then sort of bolt together with these standard size screws and the reason we tend to use things with um, either a star or a hexagon allen key fitting is just that it makes it less likely to be stolen these are surely to be self tapping nuts as well okay so we're going to make a start by just doing something very similar to this <coughs> so let's minimize that one for a second so Right, so we're on to Pro Desktop, and you can see on the side there we've got three sort of areas. We've got the base, the frontal, and the lateral. Now, there's two ways we could do this. One is to draw the circles, but make sure it cuts through um, that section there, which is probably the way that we are going to do it. The other way is to draw a square and then just round the corners off, which again is another way to make sure that it goes directly through that base. So, what I need to do first of all is just view the uh, work planes. <coughs> So, show all sketches, so that might work. Uh, let's click on to the work planes now. So, view. And we want to work planes. So, so, just by pressing W on there, you can see that I've got the work planes that I need to draw on. Now, because of the way that I draw, um, I'm going to choose to ch use a different work plane other than the base. I'm going to start by drawing on this one, which is obviously the front on there. I can tell that just by clicking onto it. And then it flashes up to tell me that I need to draw on the frontal. So I go over to the frontal, right mouse click on the mouse, and then select New Sketch. Click onto New Sketch, click onto OK. And if I press the Shift key or the arrow key and the letter W and place it back into there, you can see we've got this sort of crosshair. Then over on this side, I've got the circle command. So if I click onto the circle command, you'll see instantly the center of that work plane is found there. And I've just enlarged that by going to the auto scale, which is the shift key and the letter A. Okay, so the next stage is to do the profile of the circle. So I'm just going to click into the center and draw this one right now. I know that the external diameter of the actual bike frame is 40, so I'm going to do mine 44, which gives us a 4mm sort of space we can use the rubber strip around. So I've gone to 44, 
and I do exactly the same from here. I click onto the center again, but this time I need to add the thickness of it. So it's if I add 44 and add two millimeters onto each side, then that would obviously make it um, up to 48. So from there, this one's showing 52, which is slightly a bit more than what we need. So I'm just going to click onto the sketch dimension tool. Uh, let me just move this where it should be. Uh, so when you've actually got these to float around, it's called docking when you put them onto the side down here. Now normally, I would have my screen set up with this part at the bottom of it. So let me just see if I can move it back in. There we go. And that's how it all docked into the area that I use. So if you find that some of your templates are at the top, um, when you're coming to use your, your screen, it looks different to this one. You can arrange your screen how what to what best suits you really. Into there, right? So my uh, sketch dimension tool. Um, I'm I am going to click onto the side and just know that the diameter is there. I know that it's got a radius of 22 and it's a diameter of 44. But when I transport this into the engineering drawing, I should be able to take these measurements in if I'm actually drawing it on here. So although I know what they are, it's going to help me a bit later on by adding these in so I'm just going to do exactly the same sketch dimension tool clicked onto the line this is saying it's got a radius um, of 26 so therefore there's a three mil diameter going around and that's probably about right so I'm going to leave it at that for the time being okay so at the moment you can see that it's shaded so because it's blue and it's shaded that means that I'm allowed to extrude it okay and that's the first thing that I'm going to do so from there I'm going to put it back into trimetric Click back into half scale, which is the arrow key and the letter H for half scale with the shift key. Then I'm going to go to feature up on the menu bar, click on to extrude profile, and I'm going to extrude this to a distance of 60mm. Okay, now whether you want it above or below the work plane is completely up to you. At this point, it really makes no difference. Okay, so I'm going to click on to OK. Now the pipe or the top bar of the bike is going to fit on the inside of this so this is going to clamp over it. So at the moment what we've got is the one side that looks similar to that. So I'm just going to put it back into the view and zoom in and then what we've got to try and do is draw the side bits on. So the easiest way to get this to match is the following. What I am going to do is just click onto the rectangle drawing. Actually I'll click onto line first and give me a line to go from. Now if I hold the shift key down while I'm drawing, it gives me this line that's straight. And what I need to do is I need to convert those into a different line type. So the way I do that is I just go to where I've got line and go to toggle construction, which is control G. And you can see it goes to this dash line. And if I click back onto that one and do control G, it does it exactly the same. And then because I've got those lines in our construction lines, that means that it's not shaded. Um, so if it wasn't a construction line, so I've just changed it back, you'll see it's gone back to being green, which is telling me that it can't shade. Okay, so I need to do that. Right, so there's my um, construction lines ready to draw on there. <coughs> so the next stage, what I need to do is draw the boxing for the top and the bottom. Now really, I only need to draw the one side because the bottom is going to be exactly the same, but because I'm going to add something onto the top of it, and I want this to go into an assembly drawing, this is why I'm drawing it to the hole, and then we're going to separate them. So, from this part, if I was to draw on this now, anything that I draw would extrude automatically, which is a good thing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. But you've got to be mindful that when you cross these lines, if we don't trim them, then the whole drawing isn't going to work. So what I'm going to do is just click from here and I'm going to go from, <coughs> I'll go from the internal line, internal line to go on square, and I'm just going to pass it so it tells us from there we know it's going to be four, or thereabouts, so it's, it's got four millimeters. So I'm just going to go past this one, I'm going to go right the way across to 20, which means that at that point it's 20 and I'm going to go by three, 20 by three that side and I'm going to do the same this side 20 by 3 so I'm just going to go 20 go up by 3 that side and you can see now that this won't extrude and you can automatically see the traffic lights come on to tell me there's a problem 
So the next thing I'm going to do is go to my trim command, which is down here, delete line segment. And I'm just going to delete these lines. So I've got to be very careful how to do this. And make sure I'm selecting the right line here. Not quite there it is. Okay, and if I go to the traffic lights now, hopefully it should have extruded. Now if it doesn't extrude, then say this is a problem, it means it's somewhere on here there's a line that I haven't deleted. Now obviously I haven't deleted this line down there, but that was just to show you what would happen. So you just zoom in and delete that line. So I'm just gonna go to um, undo a second. I'm gonna go back to my trim command and there's the line. You can see these lines here, there's a the line that I need to delete. Right, so I'm going to undo last there because I've clicked on the wrong thing. There you go, and you can see it's all shaded blue now. So if it doesn't shade, it means that you've got a line that isn't um, a, what we call a closed profile, it extends it. And you just need to find out which part isn't attached. Okay, so at that point, if I click the traffic lights and then click back onto Trimetric, you can see what it's done. It started to change this sort of shape in here. Right, what do I do next? Well, I'll do exactly the same. So I'm going to put it back into Trimetric, which is arrow key, letter T, then arrow key, letter W, puts it back into work plane, arrow key, or the shift key, and the letter A, makes it zoom in. And then I need to change this back to work plane so I can see where I'm drawing. And this time I'm going to click onto frontal because I'm still drawing on frontal. What I want to draw on a new sketch. So I'm going to click New Sketch, click onto OK, and I'm ready to draw. Now, to do this, I'm going to click back onto the rectangle, and this time I'm going to click onto that corner, which is where I want it to be, line it up with this corner so we know that that's correct, and we also need this to be 3. So you can see that we're going down 3 millimeters on this one. So we'll do it this way because then we can practice doing the same thing we've just done. So that way and up to three. And I'm just going to go <coughs> to extrude these. Now you can see at the moment it hasn't affected the drawing doing it this way because this is now a separate drawing. It's like a different layer that's on top. It's not actually built on to the other layer. I'm going to put it back into trimetric now. And I'm just going to go to feature, extrude, and I'm going to extrude if I can just move that out of the way, up to six as well. Now, there's two ways we can do this, if you'll let me move it. Right, the first one is to click onto the yellow box, and just to drag this up to where it's got 60, because we know that's, that's where it is. Or the other way is, of course, is just to type in 60 there, and to click onto OK. Right, now, what's happened here, is because we didn't select the add material, it's actually subtracted the material. And if that happens, what you'll need to do then is go back to where you've just drawn it in the browser and change it. So the way that you do that, if that does happen, is click on to features. You'll see that we got extrusion two. That's the last thing that we extruded. I can click onto the side there. I can click onto sketch two, so it then shows me what it is. And all I do then is just press the right mouse hand button Sorry, extrusion 2, redefine, and instead of subtracting material, we're going to add material. And that happens quite frequently. So if that does happen, that's exactly how you would correct it. Right, so we need to round some of these edges off as well. So what I'm going to do now is press E for edge, um, and I'm going to select all the corners of this clamp. There we go. And then once I've done that, now to select more than one, you have to hold the shift key down. Otherwise, you'll just select one corner at a time. So I'm going to go to feature, I'm going to go to round edges, and I'm just going to put a little bit of a chamfer on there, not too much, maybe even five. And then from that point, click onto OK. And that's just made it just that little bit safer. OK. Now, what I need to do is put a hole straight the way through these grips so they go together. So to do that I need to go back to my work planes but this time do you remember where the work planes were? Let me just zoom out. Okay you can see that I need to be drawing on this one which is in fact the base. Okay 
So I'm going to go back over to the base, click on to new sketch, click on to OK. We're now drawing on the base, you can tell that we are because this is now in bold. And I'm going to press the shift key and the letter P, which is the plan view, and I'm ready to start drawing the holes where they need to be. Okay, so I only need two holes in this bracket. So what I am going to do from this point of view is that's where the centre is going to be, and it should automatically find the centre of these, but if it doesn't, I'm just going to draw a line going straight away across. Doesn't matter where because I'm going to correct it. And I'm going to change that to a hidden line, so I'm going to press Ctrl G. I'm going to go back to my sketch dimension tool and I'm going to click onto there, click onto the bottom and of course I know that's 60 so the centre of this must be 30. So to change the number you just keep double clicking on um, the number on the arrow and eventually your dialog box will appear and we can just click onto that to say that you want that to be 30 millimetres which means the other half is also going to be 30 millimetres. Okay, so the next stage then is to do exactly that to find the centre of this bit. So now if I draw another line there, going straight the way across, press Ctrl G as well. So Ctrl G, back to there, and this time I know that that needs to be 15. Okay, and I need to click onto this one, draw my line across as well, Ctrl uh, G, let's change it into there, and I do exactly the same, sketch dimension, and just check. That that's 15 so it's not so I'll double click onto the number and then change that to 15 click on to OK right so I now need to put the vertical lines in where I'm going to drill the holes through to connect this together so at this point I just go to my line command and I can snap to corners to corners but well, the easiest way is exactly that is to just find center from here just by drawing a line going down control G and a line going down here, Control G. So now click onto Control G, and I do exactly the same. So I can measure the distances between us, telling me that's eight, and that's eight point one seven. So that's good enough for me. So I'm going to keep this outside one as eight. So I'm just going to undo the last sketch dimension and just make sure that this one is also eight. Okay, so let's undo that one again. Let's try it again. Click, click and hold. And that's eight. So we're ready to go. And then the next stage is to drill these holes going through. So at this point, go back to the circle, click onto the circle, it snaps now to where it needs to be. I've just drawn, or it's just showing, that's a four millimeter hole, which is exactly what I want. So click, four, click, four, click, four, and we're ready to put the holes through. So at this point, I just press the shift key letter T for trimetric, go to where it's got feature, extrude, and I'm going to go and subtract the material, and I'm going to pull it straight away through the material, and then click on to OK. Now, what we should see is, at the bottom, these holes have been put through. But the reason it hasn't gone through the top is because the work plane is directly halfway through. So what I also need to do is go to Feature, Extrude, and I need to subtract material, but this time it needs to be above the work plane as well. I click on to OK. OK, so now we've got a hole going right the way through it. And that is a hard bit done. So the final stage is, I'm going to save this one. So I'm just going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this as... top bracket if I can spell bracket one and then click on to save and you'll see it changes to top bracket one at the top and then I'm going to go to file save copy as and this time I'm going to call it bottom bracket one and then click on to save Right, so I'm still on top bracket one here. So this bit I want to keep the top bracket. So what I am going to do is go back to frontal. So I'm going to click onto frontal, and go to right mouse click, click onto new sketch, click onto OK. Now at this point, if I go back by pressing the shift and W, what I should be able to do now is draw me a box halfway on that line, go into trimetric, Go to Feature, Extrude, say I want to subtract the whole lot, 
take it right the way past the drawing just by clicking on the yellow square and dragging it through and then clicking on to OK and I'm left with the top bracket so I'm going to save that one so file save I'm now going to open the bottom bracket and do exactly the same so I'm going to go to file open click on to bottom bracket uh, where is it top bracket so bottom bracket there it is now these different file types um, if it's an album file it'll have ALB on if it's a design file which is what we've got it'll be a DES file for design and if it's an engineering drawing one it'll be a DRA file so let's open this one up and now I'm going to do exactly the same so on this part all I'm going to do next is go to um, frontal new sketch and do exactly the same but obviously on this time what I want to do so I press the shift key and the letter W what I want to do is just delete the top section so from here if I just go into there put it back into trimetric which is a shift key and letter T and then go to feature extrude profile take it right away across subtract material click on to OK and I'm now left with the bottom bit as well so I can go to file and then save ok so file and save Right, now to prove that we've got these two parts in exactly the place that we need it to be, all I'm going to do is click on to File New, click on to Design, I'm going to start a new drawing, but this time I'm going to add the drawings in as an assembly drawing. So if I go to Assembly, Add Components, find the parts that I need. So the first thing I need is Top Bracket, there it is, Top Bracket comes in, and I can move this around a bit, and if I go to Assembly, Add Components, click on to Bottom Bracket, there's the bottom bracket, click on to OK and I can move that around and then what I need to do is line these up so the easiest way to do that is go to assembly OK first of all we need to select the edges so um, if I just press E for edge just on the keyboard by itself and just select the two that I want to align so these ones are I'm going to align these two holes and I'm going to do that by using center axis so go to assembly click on to center axis and it'll move those in. I'm going to align these two holes, assembly, center axis. And now, although I can move the part, so P and I can move it around, it also means now that if I want to, if I fix one part, which I will do now, so assembly, fix component, what's going to happen now is I should be able to move this and only move it up and down to show how this part assembles. So if I was looking at it from a front view, just rotate it around with the cursor keys I can see how that bit's going to fit together 